A Ranger, a role-puzzling adventure isn't just an oddly accurate title, but also a coming-of-age story about a misfit named Gemma who can shift the tiles underneath her feet and sets off on her way to explore the world for the first time and find out more about her mysterious origins. Yes, that's right. As you move, you end up shifting a column or row beneath yourself to move you and others. Whenever you're moving in the game and reach an edge, you wrap around to the other side of the row, which may have been the most difficult part for me to visualize at times, but added a huge element to puzzle solving and can be a speedy way to move through the world. A counter to this tile movement is an antagonistic force called the static that locks objects in place, preventing you from pushing the tiles any further. I found this antagonist to be a neat fusion of story and gameplay. A Ranger has a beautiful painted look to it, which isn't a surprise coming from the same brilliant artist behind Braid. At times the games uses a simple but effective technique to put comic panels around the edges of puzzles to tell the story while allowing gameplay to continue. The art style hooked me immediately, but thankfully the gameplay and story are what kept me invested. A Ranger's puzzle based gameplay starts with you, well, arranging and shifting around objects to either allow you to dart through them or move them in such a way to let you move forward. I love the little details here when characters or objects have secondary motion to them as they are affected or caught off guard by the ground shifting underneath their feet. Soon enough you'll run into a static enemy and are presented with a sword. I originally wondered how this was going to work. Was I going to pick it up and attack? Nope, you have to push the sword along to the enemy, a puzzle in itself at times, and that takes care of things. Some enemies respawn after a hit to another location. And the only way to dispatch them is by blocking their respawn point, and that's when the game really starts becoming more of a challenge. Each area started throwing in some new puzzle mechanics such as lock and pull strings, and lasers that have to be bypassed, taking turns I didn't expect and really making me think about the puzzles in a new way. There's even a unique form of fishing where you have to make enough space to pull back the line, although this didn't quite feel as satisfying to me. Most of the puzzles I liked overall, although the lock and pull strings felt a little overly complicated at times when planning out the routes rather than a natural fit. The difficulty curve in some areas ramped up a little quick before moving on to new ideas, but at the benefit of a puzzle type not becoming stale. And if you're worried about being stuck in a puzzle, a ranger has an assist mode in the game that lets you bypass them with a portal. I was stuck on one that I knew that was going to be tough going in and decided to bypass it because I reached a point where I'd tried for so long I didn't think I'd feel rewarded if I figured it out. The assist mode here is a great feature not to beat your head against the wall, and I'll add this tip if you're stuck. Chances are that you have to wrap around the edges for the solution. On top of that, you can't die in the game, but that didn't stop a ranger from having bosses. I was honestly surprised to see them in the game and a fun little addition. While going out in the world, Gemma runs into all sorts of encounters with all sorts of people. The gameplay and story are well intertwined, but there was a point where the story's importance surpassed the gameplay. I was particularly struck by the area where all the residents stayed inside and talked to each other via robotic birds, and you can't move on till you destroy their data center to entice people out of their homes. It was clearly a message about the high usage of carrier pigeons, I mean Twitter, or social media, and a reminder to also go outside and do things. This resonated with me as I find it's too easy to get all caught up in social media and content FOMO and made me realize the ranger's story had more to it than at first glance. Near the end of the game, I had the traditional there's no going back, is there anything else you'd like to do message? And truthfully, I felt like there was only one thing I didn't complete along the way while most of my journey was on the critical path. At times, there are three different areas to explore from a hub, and in my mind I had to make my way through one of these spokes once I committed. In the end, a ranger surpassed my expectations with its puzzle variety and playful moments, and a story that was deeper and more engaging than what I expected along with little bits of dialogue that had me laughing. While mostly relaxing, I did find a few of the puzzles a challenge to wrap my head around, albeit only using the assist once, maybe as a result of needing a couple more tutorial-like puzzles or side areas to build up my puzzle-solving skills, and on a handful of times, felt like the game could have made a few elements a little more obvious. Overall, though, a wonderful mix of gameplay, story, plus humor that I liked a lot and scored an 8 out of 10. Thank you for watching this Game Explain review. If you end up playing a ranger and are impacted by its story, you can ironically let us know in the comments. And I'll leave it on one more fun little moment I wanted to talk about. A ranger has one of the best tumbleweeds ever. There's your review quote right there.